Are we done wife swap or quarterback swapping? Is it, is it done? We have it, clarity. I think we finally have clarity. Justin Fields traded, Kenny Pickett traded, Jimmy Garoppolo signs with not the Broncos. I, as a Broncos fan, have escaped the avalanche of mediocre quarterbacks possibly competing for a job to be a bridge QB in training camp. Friday, the Steelers traded Kenny Pickett to the Eagles, and then 24 hours later, they parted ways with the sixth, possibly fourth round draft pick to acquire Justin Fields. Friday morning, the Vikings got aggressive and snatched the Texans' first round pick, making them the draft's most mysterious team. So today, I want to try and break down what this all means for the Steelers, the Vikings, the draft, and the most QB needy team in the NFL. It really is the Broncos. I've been pleased to watch the Denver Broncos dismantle their roster down to nothing, do absolutely nothing in free agency. And once they decided to move on from Russell Wilson, this was the only option, the smart option, sitting through free agency and knowing your team will not do anything is like going to get a root canal. It's painful, sure, but necessary if you want to smile with confidence ever again. Am I doing it right, Joker? The thing getting me through all of this, the carrot that was being dangled, was the hope that the Broncos could be aggressive to get a QB that they love in this draft, which was feasible sitting at pick 12. The Vikings were a thorn in our side sitting at 11, yes. But to jump them wouldn't have been impossible. But now Minnesota holds all the cards and the Broncos have no real chance at getting QB number four in this draft. One fair question is who the hell is QB number four? And are the Broncos in danger of not even getting QB five? Who are the Vikings targeting? I need answers, we're diving in. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. I, I have to ask you to do that. Otherwise, YouTube says they'll turn me into a eunuch. That's the deal. Also, my coffee company, benchwarmerbrew.com. We got the F the refs blend. Sure, it's the off season, but you can still F the refs. We got mugs there. We've got other beans, and we're gonna be dropping new tea very soon, a special uh, Jess Brain version of tea. That's my wife. She gets her own tea, because she'll divorce me. All right, thank the Christ Almighty. Justin Fields has been freed from Chicago. For every person telling me over and over again the last few weeks that they weren't trading him, please go apologize to me in the comments. Now, when the Steelers signed Russell Wilson, I didn't think they would be in the Justin Fields sweepstakes. Russ gave Kenny Pickett some time to reset. And if Russ was amazing, again, cool. If not, let Kenny Pickett take back over. I also believe the Steelers do have faith in Kenny Pickett. Yes, I gotta have faith. We've got breaking news in the NFL after signing quarterback Russell Wilson. The Steelers trading former first round pick Kenny Pickett to the Eagles. The Steelers do have faith in Kenny Pickett. <laughs> It seemed really cut and dry for the Steelers. But then, old Kenny Pickett couldn't even hold on to the backup job and they traded him uh, and a PR war ensued. The Steelers came out guns a-blazing saying Kenny Pickett didn't handle the Russell Wilson acquisition well. He didn't want to compete. Pickett's camp got it out there that he was told the quarterback job was going to be given to Russ and there would be no competition after he said he could compete for it. Believe whatever the hell you want. It's irrelevant and nobody actually cares. All that matters is that as soon as the Steelers sent him to Philly for a little more than they gave up for Fields, the Steelers became players again for Justin Fields. Now the Steelers will have the most hilarious quarterback competition on earth. Russell Wilson versus Justin Fields. That is basically Russell Wilson versus younger Russell Wilson with a less accurate arm. Don't believe me, look at this stat. What? Did we just become best friends? Yup. You son of a bitch. Both guys heading to Pittsburgh as outcasts 
tossed aside from their former lovers, they have that in common as well. And I think there's way more upside for the Steelers with Justin Fields, but Russ will be better right now. Some people may think it will be good for Justin Fields to sit behind Wilson. And the Steelers made it clear Russell Wilson is the day one starter. But I disagree with that situation. Fields has been in the league for three full seasons. The only way he's getting any better is by playing football. This situation is different, right? Russ has to go in, learn a new system, build chemistry with all new offensive players. It's not like Jordan Love sitting behind Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers was still an MVP. Russ ain't even close to that. And if he is, Fields is never touching himself. The field. Get it? Get it? Justin needs to go in there with the mentality that he's going to ball so hard, piss pisper. Pittsburgh regrets giving Russ $1.2 million. He needs to do so well in training camp, the Steelers go back on their word that Russ is going to start week one. He has to Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson, Matt Flynn. He has to do what Russ did to Matt Flynn, because sitting behind Russ for a year ain't going to do him shit. Unless, of course, Russ gets hurt. That's going to be his only opportunity. The craziest part of the Justin Fields trade, besides the absolute dog shit compensation the Bears got for him, is uh, every single quarterback drafted in the first round of the 2021 NFL Draft, besides Trevor Lawrence, is now on another team. Well, that sentence will be true in about 48 hours once Zach Wilson is traded for one free large Pepsi for his whole family or whatever the hell that Giants giveaway was a couple years ago. Zach Wilson was the second overall draft pick, and he won't command more than Desmond Ritter right now. In fact, Ritter for Rondale Moore might be a fucking fleecing of the Cardinals when you see the rest of these comps given out for QBs. Now the Vikings, when they signed quarterback Sam Darnold, I thought the Broncos dodged another bullet in free agency. The Broncos not signing Sam Darnold, Jacoby Brissett, Joe Flacco, Jameis Winston, Drew Locke, Terod Taylor, had me feeling like fucking Neo in the Matrix. Now I knew the Vikings were a quarterback problem for Denver the second Kirk Cousins departed for Atlanta. If you've been paying close attention, uh, the two teams most linked to J.J. McCarthy have been the Broncos and the Vikings. If you've been paying closer attention, the Vikings also really like Drake May, which means they Drake may be trying to get into the top three to select him, which is now possible after the Vikings and Texans traded draft picks. Minnesota gets the Texans 23rd pick, and a seventh rounder in exchange for a second and sixth rounder this year and a second next year. The NFL has a handy chart, which has numeric value assigned to every draft pick. Now this helps every team assess what is needed for fair draft pick trade comp. That way you avoid doing something that makes no sense, like trading your entire draft for say Ricky Williams. Now the Bears at pick number one overall have an assigned value of 3,000 points, which means any team trying to trade into that spot must provide the equivalent of 3,000 points. Minnesota with the 11th pick and now the 23rd pick have a combined value of 2,010 points, which gets them all the way to pick number four. It also has them within striking distance of picks two and three, which if they want Drake May is probably where they have to land, right? Having two first round picks in this draft is also more valuable and appealing to NFL teams who might want to trade picks versus a team offering first rounders next year. This trade by the Vikings is fascinating for a couple reasons. One, we don't know if they're trying to get into the top three or if they are simply trying to ensure they get JJ McCarthy before the Giants or before the Broncos or Raiders can finagle their way ahead of Minnesota at 11. Personally, I believe they are doing this for J.J. McCarthy, which is why they signed Sam Darnold. He is the perfect bridge QB for someone as young as J.J. Remember, Sam Darnold also came into the NFL when he was just 12 years old. I see dead people. I see dead people. I also don't think New England or Washington is actually willing to move out of spots two and three in this draft. Now, the keys for the top of this draft are the first three picks and they are going to be Caleb Williams, Drake May, and Jaden Daniels. That leaves Arizona at four, taking Marvin Harrison, which after watching both Hollywood Brown and Rondale Moore leave Arizona is more certain than ever. 
The Chargers traded Keenan Allen to the Bears and cut Mike Williams, so I see no situation where the top five picks aren't all quarterbacks or receivers. It was really cool of the Bears, though, to show Justin Fields one more new weapon he'd never get to play with in Keenan Allen. We love you one DJ more, Justin, but we love Caleb Williams one DJ more and one Keenan Allen. This also means the Giants at pick six are the team the Vikings might fear are preparing to draft JJ McCarthy or whoever is the consensus number four quarterback. They keep telling us it's JJ, so let's just assume it's JJ. It could be Penix, it could be Knicks, we don't know but it's JJ. This opens up an insane can of worms for trade scenarios between the Chargers and the Vikings. The wildest one being the Chargers trade Justin Herbert to the Vikings so Jim Harbaugh can draft his crush, JJ McCarthy. Now, if Jim really believes JJ is the best quarterback in this draft, like he said, that makes a lot of sense. But when speaking, Jim Harbaugh doesn't usually make a lot of sense, so who knows? Gobble, gobble, turkey. You know, where, where is gobble, gobble, turkey? just gobble, 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 turkey from jive turkey gobblers, you know? It's, uh... But what if the Vikings trade just Justin Jefferson to the Chargers and their 11th overall pick versus the package of both first rounders we're assuming they're trying to deal? Like, are we certain any receiver the Chargers can get in this draft would be better than Justin Jefferson? The Vikings just might trust their ability to evaluate receivers, right? And be willing to move on from Justin Jefferson right now. Unlikely, but I'm trying to show you how many options the Vikings do have and how I think they really control that top 10 of the draft. We assume the Vikings have their next trade partner lined up and will make that move before the draft, well before the draft, like we saw the Bears and Panthers do last year. Until then, Minnesota is really going to fucking annoy me because as a Broncos fan, I need to know if they're trying to get into the top three or not. If they go top three, the Vikings, then I, I as a fan can go back to dreaming about JJ McCarthy. Some of you may laugh at that. <laughs> Just as I did the first time I heard how high he might go. But my team needs a QB so bad, I'm like a junkie in a back alley willing to do anything to get my fix. I will suck, I will fuck. Even worse, I'll do your goddamn taxes if that's what it takes to get a quarterback. File a simple return for free. Now with the glory hole. We can no longer hope JJ falls to 12. I can't guarantee he'll be better than Michael Penix or Bo Nix, but his upside at the moment appears to be more valuable to NFL teams in the quarterback market. I'm at the Vikings' mercy, as are the Giants now and the Raiders. We're all praying Minnesota moves into the top three. If they do that, that suggests either the Commanders or Patriots are also high on JJ McCarthy and believe they can get him at 11, or they can then execute a small jump to draft him before Denver or Vegas gets into the top 10. Here's where the Broncos are screwed, okay? If Williams, Daniels, May, and McCarthy are all off the board by 12, the Broncos have to decide to either reach for their guy right there draft a premier player who will be available because of the run on QBs and receivers, or trade back, add a second rounder, and take a QB in the second, possibly late in the first, the more appropriate time to take a quarterback that there's no guarantee he'll be there. They are playing a dangerous guessing game heading into this draft. For Broncos fans, the question becomes not should Denver move up for JJ if that is indeed the guy Sean Payton loves, it becomes how ridiculed will we all be when the Broncos draft Bo Nix at 12. It's totally fair to debate Pinnix or Bo Nix, but I think the feeling here in Denver is that Sean Payton has football erections for two QBs right now, Bo Nix and JJ McCarthy. I'm actually okay with either one, I really am, but not in the scenario that's going to happen where we're settling for our second choice. I'm good with any of these four dudes. McCarthy, Penix, Nix, Rattler. As long as Sean Payton is actually high on one of them. Please be high on one of these gettable quarterbacks. The one thing still giving me hope Honestly, it's knowing how wrong literally almost everyone has been about pretty much every single quarterback drafted in the last three drafts. That's not fair. Everyone knew the 2022 draft was more barren than the Chargers Lombardi trophy case. So yeah, I'm hoping 
on to all hope that Bo Nix or Michael Penix is actually the best or second best quarterback in this draft class. And all of those assholes out there are wrong again, just like they were about CJ Stroud last draft. I'm not a test taker, hey, so hey, I play football. Hey. Think about it. If CJ Stroud were in this draft class, like if he stayed in college another year, he'd probably also be QB4 per the experts right now. The only way this becomes completely irrelevant for Denver is if the quarterback Sean Payton has actually honed in on is Tulane's Michael Pratt. I know that probably sounds desperate, and it is. It's insanely desperate. I'm getting desperate, but if someone is going to have a good read on him, it's Sean Payton. Tulane is in Louisiana, and Sean's got more scouting ties and info on that kid than the CIA, and the CIA has been watching him for a while. And no, I won't say why, I don't need that heat right now. My understanding is they've been monitoring a lot of these situations, but haven't really gotten involved in, say, offers, negotiations with any of these available guys. This is not fun. It's absolutely the correct thing for the Broncos to do. Not wasting any money or draft value, no matter how low, on guys like Sam Donald, Jimmy G, Desmond Ritter. It pains me to say this, Gardner Minshew, again, Jacoby Brissett, Kenny Pickett, Justin Fields, not getting any of those guys that's smart. Stidham can literally perform at the exact same level as most of those quarterbacks. And if you're in the position of not being able to draft a franchise quarterback in the 2024 draft, you're going to want to suck so bad the NFL investigates you for tanking and pray a college QB emerges next season as the savior, should you or Sanders. And if the savior for the Broncos in this draft is indeed JJ McCarthy, they are fucked. But if that guy is Bo Nix, Michael Penix, Spencer Rattler, or Michael Pratt, they can be had. And they better come into training camp in Denver and make Jarrett Stidham look incompetent. Because the one thing these guys have is a ton of reps as college QBs and there's no point in drafting any of them and not expecting them to be ready to go as soon as possible because again they have played in college for a million fucking years and they need to be ready to save my please save my team thanks for watching that's good sports thank god this is over I don't think I have ever seen this many QB moves in one free agency period Again, please subscribe here or I have no more wiener. For YouTube.